Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Access Miracles. Um, I'm Dan, and uh, <laughs> waving to everybody. Um, Marie's uh, taking a little break uh, from the show this week, but she'll be back next week. And um, I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity to uh, introduce my good friend, Eric Archbold, who uh, has been a friend and a mentor since I've uh, known him a little bit before I joined community. And um, he is going to be my guest today. Um, first, I just wanted to uh, present uh, the, uh, one of the principles of the course of the uh, of miracle principles from the Course in Miracles, which is uh, principle number seven, which is miracles are everyone's right. But Purification is necessary first. And in that, um, we will no doubt touch on that as we, as we interview uh, Eric. And um, so uh, I think he's, he, I see him there among us. Hey, Dan. And he's about ready to be uh, brought on. So uh, without uh, further hesitation, here comes Eric, Eric Archbold. Hi, Hi, Eric. <laughs> Hi, Dan. <laughs> Welcome. It's so Thank great to you. see you. Yeah, I am um, in thinking of a uh, guest for this week. Uh, you came to mind very strongly, and um, I thought, wow, that's great. He hasn't even been on any of these shows yet, so <laughs> I thought this was perfect. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Um, I. I was wondering if maybe you could kind of fill us in a little bit about your background and uh, how, just briefly how you uh, uh, were involved. Oh, I kind of lost you there for a second. Oh, I'm, I'm here. Be okay. All right. All right. Um, how you, what you uh, did uh, previous to uh, um, becoming involved with Living Miracles and, um, and how that has led to uh, where we're at now. So. Mm. You, yeah, go ahead. I, I, I don't know. Probably many have heard this story, but um, I'm guessing that this parable is new to some for sure. Yeah. Well, I guess I could just start with after, after graduating from college, I had an engineering degree, but I had had kind of some mystical experiences in college, which made me realize there was a lot more going on you know, to the the world, the universe, that it wasn't what it seems. And and so after about a year of, of working in engineering, I, I, I changed my career to hypnotherapy. And I was fascinated by my mind at that point. Like what is going on? How do I how do I find consistent peace? You know, I had, had an experience of really deep peace, uh, but I, I didn't know how to get back to it. And so hypnotherapy was for me a way of just exploring because I could tell it had to do with beliefs. It had to do with the inner workings of the, the subconscious mind or the unconscious mind. And so hypnotherapy was a great career for me to practice exploring myself and working with others. And then I think it was, it was when I got into the course and started to really study that, that that things just continue to take a even deeper turn inward. And um, I, I listened to Ken Wapnick for many years and really listened and studied the metaphysics of the course. Um, but then when I found David, I could feel that there was just a lot, there was a much greater depth to all this. And I needed to, to start going beyond the intellect and into the, the real practical experience. But I really didn't, I didn't really know what I was in for. And, and um, you know, some of you have heard some of my parables, but I, I went to a retreat with David, a three week retreat with David and Jason and Lisa, had a very powerful experience there and was guided at that point to leave the hypnotherapy career and just drop it completely, even though I had a house with a mortgage and a lot of credit card debt. And uh, I didn't really know how I'd, how I'd support myself without that career. But, but when I joined with David about it, he, he and I prayed and he heard the words traveling minstrel come into his mind. 
that that was to be my my next step. And um, it's actually taken quite a few years for that to really come to fruition. I feel like it now it's it started to happen in a way that I, you know, I don't know, that feels very, very profound, very, it's, it's always been profound, but I feel like these, this last few weeks have, have pushed me to a new level of trust that I'm just so grateful for. But um, yeah, that's, that's been the journey. I, I, you know, there was also a story of, I got married at one point for four years. That was kind of a big, a torpedo to the ego and <laughs> out of a lot of my head space and helped me to really just start to get into the practical application of using relationships for mm -hmm. healing. But um, so I think it's been that and the music and a lot of the traveling. I have traveled quite a bit over the years with different ones like, like Armel and then Ricky and Kirsten at times and, and um yeah, it's just been a lot of a lot of healing in a practical way that that, that continues. It, it feels like it just continue, just continues on and wiping away all that's all that's not love within me. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the seventh principle uh, uh, of miracles, uh, as I read, was uh, brings in the the idea of purification and. Um, how would you say that that applies to the experience of your having uh, miracles happen for you now? Was there a purification process beforehand? Yeah, absolutely. There's, yeah, I, I feel that the time that I was with Armel was a very powerful. The one I was married to Armel for about four years. And during that time, I had to face so much stuff in myself that, I, you know, she would get angry at me all the time. <laughs> you know, some of us can maybe relate how relationships can be really challenging when, well, just in general, but, but when there's a lot of healing and, and um, kind of opposing viewpoints, then those are ego viewpoints that need to be washed away. And, and I've always been much more like, I think like Bill Thetford was more kind of calm and even keeled. Whereas Armel was probably more like Helen Shuckman was with her emotions, just very, um, very intense, you know, intense highs and intense lows, like intense darkness and rage at times. And so it forced me to, to just continuously look within and say, okay, what I'm perceiving out here in her must be pointing at something unhealed in myself if I'm, if I'm being triggered by it, which I, which I was. And so a lot of practical forgiveness there. And then it just continued in the times I've been in community where I've been working with different ones and, and just having to continuously let go of my own opinions, my own um, preferences and ideas about how things should be done and just give myself over to how can I be truly helpful and how can I be used by the spirit in a way that, it doesn't uh, involve my ego. And so I feel like there's just been years and years of purification and it, it continues on. And it's, it's just from this willingness to keep taking responsibility for my state of mind and looking within when, when there's something that feels off. It's always that there's something off within. It's, that's, the, that's the secret. I, I love how David would often share that when he was traveling and in his early years, he kept hearing this mantra in his mind, which was, it's your lesson, it's your lesson, it's your lesson. And that idea has, I think, saved me from a lot of, a lot of heartache over the years and pain that could have been there otherwise. Yeah, yeah I know for me, um, I've been actually just, I've been in community now about a year. And um, uh, so often the lessons uh, for me, uh, are made kind of obvious during the day. And then, you know, I kind of go into it just before I go to sleep and I, I ask for clarification. I ask for healing. And it's in the morning that I feel this shift that um, something has happened. And I never had experienced that before. Um, 
it's, I don't know, for me, that's kind of how it worked. And, and then there's this, you know, uh, the issue might come up again if it's a matter of uh, feeling, uh, getting impatient with someone or, um, or feeling that I was a victim about something or other. All these opportunities c come up and continually come up. But it's like they are um, washed away little by little and they come up um, less, with less and less strength, less and less uh, impact on me. And so, um, yeah, that was just kind of my experience for, for the last year, which is really seemed like a very short period of time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can tell you if, if I think, I feel like I've, I've really uh, made some some amazing um, spirit has really shifted me in a lot of ways. And if it happens again this way next year, the way it did last year, um, yeah, I'm going to be pretty happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. Yeah. It keeps getting yeah. deeper and we keep, I feel like every year I look back on who I was a year before and I go, wow, I really have made gains in this in my peace or in my my ability my to forgive my willingness it's it is amazing to look back sometimes it can feel like oh i'm not getting anywhere but when when you start to look back and see where you who you used to be you can you can see the shifts yeah that's for sure um yeah that contrast uh, element really helps um because uh, i've had a, a couple of in and outs now leaving mexico going to the states coming back going back to the states and then and uh, having had a chance to visit friends and and um, and family, uh, my brother and and uh, yeah, it's I can really I can tell I can feel the shift, no question about it. So it's it's exciting. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you also. Uh, I know that you recently had some guidance to go onto the road, get on the road again, and and let spirit guide you, take you to places and uh, introduce you to people. And I wonder if you could share something about that with us and uh, some of the miracles that have occurred. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, I left um, the Living Miracles Center in Camas, I think back in April, with this really strong feeling that I was just to go out and just see what happened and connect with people. and and just enjoy extending, get out there and just meet, go to chorus groups and meet people and extend the music and share and just, and just be willing to, to see what, and I didn't have a car. I was just going to be going by bus. And I, I had a, you know, a sprinkling of people I had, I knew in the areas. So I, I kind of felt like there's some, there's some people I can connect with when I'm out there. But I first went to Sedona and which is where you're from. And it was, it was amazing there. I'd never been to Sedona and I was just blown away by the, the beauty of the, you know, the, uh, the landscape there. And I was there for a month with my friend, Pete James. Some of you may have seen the videos. We did a couple of Facebook lives from his hospital room because he was going through cancer. He's actually here right now at my house. He came out to, to visit. He's in remission right now. And so uh, we've been connecting and, and, and uh, collaborating. And, and then after about a month in Sedona, I started to feel like I needed to continue. I was starting to become stagnant, but I was terrified of leaving and kind of going into the unknown again. And yet I felt the whole time I had kind of felt like I'm going to go to Sedona, then I'm going to go to Phoenix, where I had just received an invitation to sing at this uh, metaphysical church there. And then I, I felt I'd be going to Los Angeles. So I started having this strong feeling to leave Sedona and go to Phoenix, but it was still a week before I, I, I was scheduled to sing at this, at this metaphysical church. And I didn't really know anybody. I knew one person in Phoenix, but she didn't have any room to host me at this, at this point. So for some reason, I felt like I think I'm just supposed to go anyways and trust. And so I put out emails to uh, Course in Miracle groups and said, I'm coming to Phoenix. If anyone wants to connect or have me sing for your group or host me, that would be great. And I think it was, it was like, the, like after I committed to that and then I, I left going. Oh, and, and, and one other detail was that, was that Pete was in Phoenix at a hospital 
getting chemo for this this one weekend and i i knew i could go there and sleep in his hospital room for one night <laughs> so because he had asked the, the, the nurses if because there was a spare bed so i'm like okay my first night in phoenix will be in a hospital bed which would be interesting and then my last night i don't might be you know i have this gig i'm going to be playing at this church but for four nights in between i have no idea where i'm going to stay so i i go and i spend the night in pete's hospital room and the day i leave i get an email reply from one of the course in miracle groups actually it was more of a metaphysical studies group and it, they said you know we'd love to have you come and share and we're on and it just happened to be the very next morning after I'd be spending the night at Pete's room, and it just happened to be five minutes from the hospital. And Phoenix is a huge area, huge area, and it happened to be like right there. So I just was like, wow, <laughs> I, mean, I couldn't have possibly, that just felt completely divine. So I go, I, I, I wrote them back, said, I'd love to. Is there any way you could, someone could pick me up from the hospital on the way? I don't have a car. She said, sure, I'll pick you up. So the next morning after spending the night with Pete there in the hospital, I get picked up and I get taken to this, to this group and there's about 40 people there. And it's a, it's a day when there's like three or four people who are slotted to, to share, just to share whatever they're inspired by for 20 minutes. And they said, you, you're going to be one of the ones who can share for 20 minutes. So we'll, we'll tell you when it's your turn. So it goes around and one guy's talking about channeling and another one's talking about like dolphin tones and different things. It was all this different new age stuff. And I just loved it. I felt like so happy to be exposed to all these different things again. And then when it got to me, I, I, I shared a little bit about my journey and what I was doing. And then I sang a song. I sang three songs, but in the middle of my second song, something, another complete miracle happened I felt which was that suddenly this woman just I could see out of the corner of my eye she she got up and it was like she was guided to walk over and bring her her dolphin toning she had one of those crystal bowls that you tone with or something and she sat it in front of me like a tip jar and put in some money and then one by one I think everyone in the group started getting up and putting money in in my jar <laughs> and I just sat there playing this song and I started having tears come to my eyes while I'm playing feeling this like wow I'm just this is such a strong symbol of support I couldn't have expected this and and then I, I finished my song I, I was so grateful I played one more song and then I just thanked everyone and said I, I'm so happy to be here if you know and I had already shared that I didn't have a place to stay that night and that I was just traveling. So at the end of the, of the, of the, the, the meeting, a bunch of people came up to me and this one woman said, I want to interview you for my radio show. And this other woman said, I, I, I also want to interview you for my video thing that I do online. And, and I also would really want to host you. So I just got inundated with this support and yeah, I, all I had to do is just, you know, follow the invitations and say yes. And and the next four days turned out to be this incredible experience of joining with people and being interviewed and staying with these lovely hosts and um, and then playing at that metaphysical church at the end of the week. And wow. yeah, I, I just was blown away by the, the love that I experienced there. That's fantastic. Um, it's really beautiful because that, I know it, it seems like faith is then taken over uh, by trust. You know, when you start seeing how it works, it really does work. Um, and I, I think those experiences are <clears throat> what we look for, you know, and, and it's, it's, the, it's the verification that, yeah, spirit's got us. You know, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, you, you had said at some point uh, that, I think I saw it on Facebook possibly, that um, there were some uh, spiritual growth pains you were going through. Mm. And, uh, and I wonder if you could uh, uh, elucidate on that a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I think what I might have been referring to was um, I, when I got back to, Cal to Northern California here, I, I, I suddenly felt no inspiration to reach out to groups anymore. I had just been traveling and doing that down in Los Angeles and, and in 
Phoenix and so forth for a few weeks. And I got back up here to Northern California, which is where my dad lives. I'm actually at his apartment right now and he's gone. And I felt no inspiration to do anything. And, and it was very scary because it felt like, no, no, I got to keep this going. I got to keep this, this going, this kind of extending and reaching out. And um, for a couple of days, I just laid, basically just laid on in the bed or sat on the couch all day long doing nothing and kind of squirming. Like it felt like all this deep fear was coming up that, that it was like the ego just saying, you're a worthless piece of nothing. And, and uh, you know, you have nothing to offer. And it was like just coming up so strong. And I, I felt like all I could do is just sit in it and face it. And I finally called David, actually. I felt like I need, I don't know if I need to just like force myself to, to get out of this somehow and start reaching out to groups again in this area. And, uh, or if I'm just supposed to, to sit in it and, and kind of sink inward. And I, that's what I felt intuitively. I really wanted to just really sink into it and go through it. And, um, and David was, as always, just so beautiful with me and, and said, no, I, yeah, I feel it's good that you're, you've got a space there at your dad's place. You can, you have the time, you've just enjoyed this beautiful time extending on the road. And this may be a, a little phase where maybe just for a few days, you don't know how long it'll last. You can just sink inward. And, and then if you get a strong feeling to start connecting with groups again, then, then that, that's great. So it lasted for about a week of what I felt were really intense, yeah, spiritual growing pains uh, where I didn't, yeah, I, I just couldn't do anything. And all I could do is face my mind really deeply. And uh, finally, it hit a point where it was, it was like, okay, this is getting, now I feel like I'm getting lost in something. I, and I prayed really hard. Okay, spirit, I really want you to guide me. Is there anything I'm supposed to do? I I feel like I'm supposed to be connecting with people now, but I am so scared of that. That won't be the guidance. Please, you know, tell me. And then the next day, um, all this inspiration came back in and I, I wrote an email to, to a bunch of people. And, mm -hmm. and so that was a few weeks ago. Since then I've been doing a lot of connecting with groups around here and, and setting up events and, and it's been, it's been more of the same of what I experienced on the road before. So yeah, I've just been grateful for that. Wow. It, it is a process. It really is. It's, it's, it's amazing how it, 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 it goes through like phases and yeah, uh, yeah that's, it gives us a little breather in between <laughs> some of those purifications. And yeah. You had mentioned too that you had written a, uh, a few new songs and I promised everyone that you would share one of those with us. Can you do that? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, we've, we've got about six minutes left. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Well, I'll so, play, yeah, I'll just play this one called Face My Fear that I, I have another one that I'm almost done with, but, and maybe I'll play a little snippet of that if there's time still, but I'll, this is the one that I've, felt was so relevant for me on on the road facing all the fear and even this last phase of these spiritual growing pains it's just wow. kind of going inward oh and i'll turn on the little setting here for the music setting. Turn. everything is falling apart it seems I'm afraid of what may come. I cannot know which way that I am meant to take. All I can do is pray. I want you to lead me. I want you to Burning 
back home Don't have to try to go fast or slow I want you to leave me You said you had another one. You kind of lead us hey, out. I'll, I'll just too? give you, yeah, I'll give you a little snippet of this All one. Right. Um, this one I'm just at the tail end of being finished with, and it's called Forgiveness. <clears throat> world that was made to blind me by hiding the key I could open up the door of my heart to where I know you really are I can't believe I've been searching for so long outside for what was already mine you told me over and over that I was your son I wouldn't hear it finally I, I took a chance and I gave you my life And you gave me forgiveness And you gave me forgiveness
There ain't nowhere else to go It is time to finally see I am not who I've believed myself to be I can't believe I've been searching for so long outside For what was already mine You told me over and over that I was your son But I would hear it finally I took a chance and I gave you my life And you gave me Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you for joining me. I love you, brother. I love you too, Dan. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining with me. Uh, we'll see you again next week, and stay tuned. There's more coming. Love you all. Thank you. <laughs>